Thank you, Deputy President. I would like to start my contribution by thanking the Honourable Jackie Jarvis for moving this very important private member's motion today. I will be speaking, of course, in support and showing my appreciation to all the emergency services personnel and volunteers. All across the mining and pastoral region, all across our summer season, our emergency services personnel have been kept very busy. You only have to take a look at the Department of Fire and Emergency Services Facebook page and then scroll down to start to get an understanding of just how many incidents our emergency services personnel responded to over the busy summer season. Like every other Western Australian, I am very grateful for our emergency services personnel. They worked around the clock in very trying circumstances at time to protect lives, to protect infrastructure and to save country. Both the Kimberley and the Pilbara received soakings across January and February, with Broome and Fitzroy Crossing receiving heavy rainfall and requiring emergency services response. Broome in particular, as a result of a seasonal tropical low, received an amazing 568 millimetres of rain in just 48 hours. The Fitzroy River peaked at 12 metres and parts of Broome Cape, sorry, parts of the Broome and Cape Levique Road uh, cracked and even parts of the road were washed away. And I want to thank the, ma the main roads teams who have responded quickly to repair these important roads. The Gascoigne as well received heavy rainfall as well as bushfires, with the Gascoigne complex of fires requiring substantial intervention from a number of services. And I would like to talk about them for a few minutes. These fires were started following lightning strikes on the 6th of January, four fires in total. They burned for a number of weeks, affecting the shires of Carnarvon, Upper Gascoigne and Shark Bay, all in my electorate. A number of pastoral stations were affected, including Meadu Station, who lost over 80,000 hectares, as well as sheep and goats. Other stations which were affected included Gilroyd, Warunga, Woodley, Yuringa, Woolamal and Kabla. Other stations reported damages, including fencing and losing farm machinery. In total, over 343,000 hectares were burnt, and the emergency services who responded did their good work in over 40 degrees heat. Heavy smoke cover and difficult terrain hindered firefighters' ability to control those fires, and they relied on the local knowledge of the pastoralists. I was in Carnarvon for a few days whilst those fires were burning, and I can personally vouch for the challenging conditions that the firefighters were facing. It was very hot. I'd like to thank and acknowledge the Minister for Emergency Services, who travelled with the DFES Commissioner Darren Clem to the Geraldton Incident Management Centre and also flew over parts of the fire grounds to see firsthand how complex the fires were and to thank those who were responding. The ground crews were assisted by the Coulson 737 Fireliner, which I think a few of the honourable members have talked about today. This was provided by the New South Wales Rural Bushfire Service, dropping over 90,000 litres of fire retardant um, ahead of the fire front, protecting pastoral property and livestock. No lives were lost as a result of the fires, which is a reflection of the good work of all those involved, as well as the fire management and subsequent response. I would like to thank everyone involved in fighting that, the complex fires, including the DBCA Parks and Wildlife Service, some of who travelled north from Perth and Peel, and who I had the pleasure of meeting and thanking in person at the Carnarvon Airport as they were catching their flights home. DFES personnel, career fire and rescue, fire and rescue volunteers, with a number of bushfire brigades travelling north from Mandaglup, I can never say that right, Mandaglup, Wanneroo and Kalamunda whose efforts were also greatly appreciated. We were also assisted by state emergency services, uh, local bushfire brigades, and of course the Shires, Gascoigne, Up Gascoigne, Carnarvon, and Shark Bay. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work that the pastoralists did in fire breaks on their own property, as well as assisting each other in fighting the fires. I would like to extend the appreciation shown here today to all emergency services personnel who were involved in fighting those complex fires. I am very thankful for their hard work to save property and lives. I'd just like to talk about a local incident, a little bit closer to home, Tom Price, where I live. Um, like many places in the northwest, we are also subject to cyclones and severe weather over the wet season, um, and this year was certainly no different. 
uh, just recently on the 7th of February without warning from Peter, the Bureau of Meteorology, which I will come back to in a second, Tom Price received a substantial amount of rainfall in just a two hour window. Whilst we don't have a weather station in town, which is uh, a little bit frustrating, uh, the local SCS tell me that they believe we received over 100 mils of rain in two hours. The unit didn't receive uh, any warnings from BOM. Normally the unit does get a bit of an email or a phone call from BOM to give them a bit of a heads up so they can be on standby, but for some reason no call was received, so the unit was caught unaware. Um, 12, it's a very small unit, our Tom Price SES, there's 17 members in total, 12 were activated uh, to assist the town. As a result of the uh, floodwaters, we did receive a lot of rain in a very short amount of time, 17 homes were impacted, uh, with three homes requiring urgent damage as they were actually flooded. We have a creek which runs through the centre of town that overflowed, which then spilt over into the town and three houses actually um, were underwater. The local Tom Price mm -hmm. SES were assisted by the Tom Price mm -hmm. High School Emergency yep. Service cadets who volunteered their spare time after school at the sub-centre, filling sandbags, and then later they jumped in the utes with the SES volunteers, delivering and laying down sandbags to protect uh, vulnerable properties and infrastructure. We had received reports that we would be receiving more rain in town throughout the week, so the SES wanted to be well prepared. I did say to the students that I would give a shout out to them in Parliament today, so I would like to thank uh, the following cadets who gave up their time. Alyssa Church, Emily Flavelle, Madeline Flavelle, Kayla Farmer, Andre Bradley, Kai Rumble, Chanel Drummond and Ebony Griffin, who had actually just joined the unit that day, so she jumped straight in, which was fantastic. I've had a bit to do with the um, high school cadets over the years. I often go to their presentations and, and I personally donate to them. And I'm particularly proud of all the volunteering that they do across our community supporting our emergency services. Following the rain event on Monday, uh, the town received further rainfall, which resulted in the SES unit receiving a further 15 calls for assistance. The weather got a little bit wilder throughout the week, resulting in uh, more sandbags being required and a number of trees required to be removed as well. I am reliably informed that over 1,000 sandbags were filled to protect our little town. Um, they didn't work alone, and I would like to acknowledge the Shire of Ashburton, Rio Tinto and Sodexo, Benko Engineering, Northwest Mining and Civil and Pure Mechanical, who all provided support to the unit on the ground to enable them to do their job. I know we've been talking a little bit about telecommunications and I do want to acknowledge that we actually lost all our telecommunications in Tom Price for four hours on Saturday night. Um, as someone who is in a household that relies quite heavily on the internet, um, it was quite frustrating. And I do want to acknowledge the Shire of Ashburton's IT crew who actually identified the problem. Um, out at, way out at Oski Roadhouse is the exchange and um, a wire had tripped in there resulting in the internet being turned off. So they were able to identify the problem, they rang the roadhouse, got the switch back on and then internet was restored, which was great. Uh, just to finish up, I do want to particularly acknowledge and show my appreciation to the Tom Price SES unit. I had the privilege of catching up with uh, the unit manager, Sue Davies, on just Sunday before I travelled down to Perth for Parliament to personally say thank you to her and her unit for all their efforts. As I've already said, it is a small unit of only 17 members, but they respond to a substantial amount of calls for assistance each year. From responding to severe weather events, such as cyclones and storms, and we do get a number of cyclones which impact on price, to conducting land searches um, and gorge rescues at the nearby Karajini National Park. I've felt this needed special men mention because a typical rescue at the Karajini National Park can take up to 14 hours, and it requires particular skills such as abseiling and uh, ropes and physical fitness to navigate the difficult terrain. Uh, one issue that the unit has raised with me, which I will be exploring for them, is the lack of a local bomb weather station. We do not have a local bomb weather station in Tom Price. The nearest uh, weather station is 80 k's away at Parabadu Airport. Uh, we're a substantially sized town with uh, a lot of mining infrastructure, and I think we, we do deserve a local weather station. 
Uh, in conclusion, I join with the Honourable Jackie Jarvis and my colleagues in this place in showing my appreciation to the emergency services personnel who have been kept busy over the summer season protecting lives, property and infrastructure. Thank you. Members, the question